please. <laughs> Ernest Borgnine was born nine decades ago in Connecticut. As a young man, he spent 10 years in the Navy. After World War II, he listened to his mother and enrolled in the Randall School of Dramatic Arts in Hartford, Connecticut. Ernie loved being an actor and soon joined the Barter Theater in Abington, Virginia. He made it up to Broadway, where producers needed actors for something new, television. Now there's a cafeteria downstairs for those of you who didn't think to bring your lunch. I don't know what you're aiming at, but you haven't been able to bust the union yet. You think I've been trying to? His first feature film was The Whistle at Eaton Falls, opposite Lloyd Bridges. Well, do you? Columbia Pictures brought Ernie to California to appear in a film with Broderick Crawford. You must be proud of my hangover. Hello, tough monkey. Ernie had to pinch himself. He began working alongside film legends like Frank Sinatra, Betty Davis, James Cagney, Joan Crawford, Spencer Tracy, Burt Lancaster, and Gary Cooper. Now open it up! Burt Lancaster was also producing movies, and he had the perfect part for Ernie. Hello. I'm Bert Lancaster, back visiting my old hometown, New York City. Recognize that fellow? His name is Marty. Never heard of him, hmm? Well, you will, because we made a picture about him. No, I'm not in it. It's all his. Oh, well, Marty, put on the blue suit, huh? Blue suit, gray suit. I'm just a fat little man, a fat, ugly man. You not ugly. I'm ugly, I'm ugly, I'm ugly. Marty. Ma, leave me alone. For his work, Ernest Borgnine received an Oscar nomination for Best Actor. On Oscar night, Ernie was sure he wouldn't win. He was up against the best actors in Hollywood. James Cagney, James Dean, Frank Sinatra, Spencer Tracy. The winner is Ernest Borgnine. Now given the film industry's highest honor, he wondered what would come next. There she is. My old gal. In the following years, Ernie continued working in films. In 1961, he returned to television to star in Seven Against the Sea, a gritty tale of wartime drama set on an island in the South Pacific. You stick your head out any further, that machine gun will be delighted to blow it off. This serious film missed the boat with viewers, but the producers got to thinking relaunched as a comedy series and recast with Tim Conway and Joe Flynn. McHale's Navy now had audiences howling. Mm. And the whole thing is your idea. Oh, well, it. yes, sir, it was all his idea. We call it McHale's Paradox. <laughs> At first, the real U.S. Navy saw nothing funny in the adventures of Quentin McHale and his rowdy crew. But when young men across America suddenly began enlisting, the Pentagon brought Ernie to Washington to thank him for being the greatest recruiter the Navy ever had. In fact, Ernie has a long history of helping his country. You've got a friend if you've got United States savings bonds. I found that out when I left the service after 10 years and wanted to be an actor. Throughout his career, he's always taken the time to honor those who serve in the armed forces, and they've appreciated it. He's also personally visited every veterans hospital in America. In 1967, Ernie was in uniform again, but this time in the Army. Now you hold it right there. This war was not started for your private gratification, and you can be damn sure that this Army isn't being run for your personal convenience either. He had a starring role in what has been called the greatest Western ever made. I'd like to say a few words for the dear dead departed, and maybe a few hymns would be in order followed by a church supper with a choir. Oh, my God. And we all remember Ernie as a hapless passenger on the maiden voyage of the Poseidon Adventure. Ernie's vast range of acting talents got him many memorable parts in scores of successful Hollywood film and television shows. Off camera, Ernie's been the voice of a number of animated characters. You're in the wrong seat. Move it. Ah. Even at age 94, Ernie's still busy. Frank Moses file. Frank Moses was one of the most effective black op agents we've ever had. He retired drug lords, terrorists. Hell, he toppled governments. Eh, 
They don't make them like that anymore. And they don't make them like Ernest Borgnine, a true living legend. Ladies and gentlemen, co-starring in red, please welcome Morgan Freeman. Can't see the teleprompter with all of you standing up. <laughs> now, as you know, Ernie is a practicing Italian. And his people have a way with words. In fact, there's an Italian expression that captures the essence of this celebration. La vita è quello che tu ne fai. Life is what you make it. How proud we are, Ernest, that you chose for his seven remarkable decades to make your life the life of an actor. And how very honored we all are to present you with this year's Screen Actors Guild Award for Life Achievement. Thank you, my friend. I agree, and thank you, Tim. Yes, it all started with a question. Have you ever thought of becoming an actor? When I came home from World War II, my mother asked me, have you ever thought of becoming an actor? You always wanted to be a, an adlequino, a clown in front of people. Well, I went ahead and became an actor. It's a long other story, of course, but I want to say one last thing about us. There are millions of those in, in the world who would love to be in our shoes. We are a privileged few who have been chosen to work in this field of entertainment. There were members of our group who will be long remembered for their work and whom we still enjoy today. I hope that we will never let our dedication to our craft fail, that we will always give the best we possibly can to our profession so that people may enjoy us in later years. On behalf of my family, my wife Tova, our love, our thanks, and our best wishes for your high success always. Thank you so very much for this great honor. Thank you. Turn Justin Timberlake, Susan Sarandon, Jeff Bridges, and Hilary Swank with a special in memoriam tribute. <laughs> <laughs>